a very long time ago, very, very long time ago, back in the last century, I was at a concert at Red Rocks Amphitheater. The band, or the duo that was playing there with their band was Brewer and Shipley. They had a song called uh, One Toke Over the Line at the time. Kind of a stupid song, but it was, it was a hit. As most hits are stupid, but you know, I digress. So, so we're at Red Rocks Amphitheater, and um, back in those days, you could get in there around noon, have your lunch, and it was all five or six dollars that, that chart was costing us. Get in there, have your lunch, set up for a picnic, and, and watch the sound check, and then see the band play at night, do their concert in the dark. It was an amazing, amazing time to grow up in Denver, Colorado. Um, but anyway, so they're doing their sound check, and, and um, I'm looking down at the stage, and I'm, I'm hearing these two amazing acoustic guitars. So I'm looking at the stage trying to figure out how they're doing it. It was way before um, pickups were installed in guitars and acoustics. And they didn't have them on the mics. They were just playing their guitars. And the guitar that they were playing was, was uh, similar to this Guild. This is a Guild uh, JF300 or JF30, actually. Uh, this, this one here is one of 200 that was made by the Guild Company with the, with the Sunburst. But it's uh, got an amazing carved back. Um, it just is a huge guitar. Uh, if you want to be loud, if you want to be heard, this is the guitar to get. And, and Brewer and Shipley were playing these guitars. Two of these without amplification, and it was as crystal clear as it could be. I fell in love with that guitar that day. And uh, that's why I have this one. I got this one uh, from Mills Music in Monroe, Washington about 34 years ago or something like that. But at the same time as I was watching Brewer and Shipley at Red Rocks, there was also uh, going down to the Denver Folklore Center. Every Friday night for Hoot Night and every Saturday night for concerts. One of my favorite groups was a group called Frumux. Dan McCrimmon and Steve Frumholz. We've lost Steve Frumholz, unfortunately, but Danny's still in, in Colorado in the Denver area, uh, picking and writing and doing all sorts of cool stuff. This is one of his songs. Billy was a lad about 10 when the horse thieves caught his daddy out. Cut him down and they rode the stock away. Billy made a cross out of cottonwood and he laid his daddy down. Swore that he'd keep the land till his dying day. Billy had a sister Nell, she was 12 that summer. Nell and her brother tried to set the farm to rights. She took sick next year in the fever caught her. She passed away on a bitter February night Billy laid her down neath the tree upon the hill Swore that soon she'd see the waving wheat from the land he'd till Billy had a little dog named Jake to keep him company Jake and the boy were watched by the people on the North Smoky Billy set to work with the burning will of a man possessed Spent his years and he worked his land and he done his best And soon Bill Orr's name traveled hand to hand As the youngest, toughest dirt farmer on the Kansas borderland Bankers asked for money down, and all Billy had was his pride. Seems sweat and tears, they just don't mean much to the law. So soon one day that sheriff came to put Billy off his land. Make him break the promise to his pop. When the lines were drawn, Billy watched the sheriff die. As the day dragged on, you could hear. Side and they took 
sent old Jake to town. Wildflowers grew and the windows fell. Still sometimes if the night is warm, you can see old Billy there. Keep a watch on the land that he loves so well. Still Billy Lower's name travels hand in hand as the youngest, toughest dirt farmer on the Kansas borderland. There's still Billy Lower's name travels hand in hand as the youngest, toughest dirt farmer on the Kansas borderland.